Hi, good morning. My name is Ashish Verma. I am a part of SAG Group, Mumbai. Uh, my topic of the day is storage technology. So before moving to storage technology, I would like to explain what is storage, te what is storage and why it is used and what are the issues and challenges uh, in a storage. So basically, uh, if we explain what is storage, so storage could be anything where you store your things or your needs. So probably if, it, if I talk about uh, water bottle, so it store your water. Okay, so it is a kind of a storage. But here we are talking about data storage. And why we are talking about data storage? Because today data is very crucial for any company, whether it is in banking, whether it is in uh, you know finance or it is in share market. And the data is why data is very critical because it has the information of the customers. Okay, so like and the like all I mean all the uh, information is in the form of a data. So basically, it is very important to store the data so that uh, company can run their businesses, they can analyze and they can analyze their strategies and all so that they can get the benefit from the market. Okay. So uh, I'll explain what are the issues and challenges currently with the storage. So basically, uh, you know, the data is increasing day by day if you go to a bank. So probably if uh, yesterday they have a limited, suppose 10 customers, 10 new customers they have attended so probably today they will attend 20 customers so the total strength of the customer is now 30 if i talk about uh, in today's scenario so basically day by day the data will increase so uh, the challenges which come for the data is growth because data is increasing day by day so you need a storage where you can manage your data the second thing is the accessibility of the data if you have a large amount of data then uh, there is some platform from where you can easily access your data. Third thing is the management. So you need a central point of uh, central point of management from where you can manage your data. So if you need your yesterday data or maybe one year uh, one year previous data or maybe two year previous data or maybe ten year previous data, then you should be able to access it. The third uh, fourth thing is the movement. Suppose if you have a uh, you know, a limited amount of a storage and you have backup your data. Suppose 1 TB you have a storage in uh, your office and you have a backup in that. After that, what you'll do if it is filled up, then you need to copy that data to some other location so that your primary storage will, will be free. So the, the example, the very, uh, you know, general example is for your uh, handicap. Suppose if you have a, a camera which has a 500 uh, GB of storage, so you are recording uh, HD uh, movies or uh, HD uh, photographs or normal photographs and once it is filled then what you will do, you will transfer that data to your laptop and after that you make it free. So the movement is a, one of the challenge for the industry. Then the last thing is the security. Security of data is very important and very crucial these days because suppose if it is a banking data and if it is a leak for any other customer, then it will be an issue. Okay, so the security is again uh, one of the primary issues in the data storage. So basically, uh, it is not very important to store the data, but the very important things are like you have to manage your data, like in term as I said in the challenges we see accessibility, manageability, then the security and the movement. Okay, so now here we are talking about the data storage. So uh, let's go. What are uh, what are the types of a storage uh, in the market right now? So types: the tape base and a disk base. So basically, this is the solution which is uh, currently in the market. Okay, so the tape base solution and the disk base solutions. What are they? So the tape based solution is the sequential accessibility of the data and the uh, disk based solution is the random access of your data. So possibly if I give the example for tape base, then in your uh, probably in your old days if you have seen a uh, cassette, video cassette or audio cassette in which we are storing your data. So data means that uh, video or uh, audio and all that. So in that if you have to go forward or maybe the backward then you have to press that forward button or backward button. So it will read the data and after some time it reach at that point where you wanted to go. 
Whereas if I talk about the disk base uh, solution, so the very simple example of disk base is your currently the DVD or CD, in which you need not to you know uh, press the forward button or something uh, you know like you can easily uh, go forward or go backward by using the cursor. So probably in the disk base, what is the advantage of disk base is like uh, you have a multiple heads which can easily read and write the data. Okay, so I have written down, jot down some advantages. So these advantages are, you know, uh, on the disk-based system over tape-based system. So the first advantage, as I have mentioned, is a fast backup and restore. So probably you have seen that uh, in your life that if you are trying to, you know, perform a backup on your cassette or floppy disk, and if you are performing a backup on your CD or DVD, it will be right faster because it has a multiple heads. Okay. Then the second thing is the scale, scaling performance. Scaling performance means like the performance of the disk based solutions or the disk based devices are comparatively tape based is very very fast. Third thing is lowering cost. If you compare your cassette or audio tape or video tape with your CD then you can see like you can store more data in your CD and uh, it is less in cost. That's Fourth thing is usability and the reliability. The reliability and the usability of uh, the CD or uh, I can say the disk based systems are very easy and it's very user friendly. You can easily understand okay how the data is written over there and uh, how I can use it. The, th the last thing is compression technique which is the one of the unique technique of the disk based solution. Compression technique means like you are storing more and more data in your DVD compared to your cassette. Okay. So these are the advantages of disk based solution. So uh, actually if you uh, look into the tape base, so the tape base are the most of the devices are the physical. So if I talk about uh, you know uh, on the enterprise level, then the mid and the smaller size or the large scale size, uh, the previously uh, they have come up with this uh, storage solution as called as tape based solution. So the tape based devices are almost equivalent to your door or maybe equivalent to your room whereas in that you can write only in one go and you can write only and you can perform only single backup whereas when the disk based solution comes it it is a simulation of your tape based devices so it means that if i am saying that this way i have a uh, i have a tape based library so you can write only one backup at a time or only one write at a time whereas in disk base you can write parallelly Okay. So I will move to the architecture, so this is the storage architecture which uh, display system have in the market. So probably if I will go with the first one, so this is the traditional architecture of the storage. Okay. So in what I have mentioned uh, there is a computer system, there is a server and they, these are the disk which is attached to the individual server. Okay, so if you see the first diagram, it will, it will, you know, you can come to like that S3 has a one disk free, S1 has a two disk free, whereas S2 has all the disk filled up. So what problem with the old traditional architecture was, like if you have a, this server is uh, completely filled with the disk, okay, then in that case, it will not able to use S3 and S2 remaining disk. Okay, so this is the basic problem of the architecture, the traditional architecture. Then move to the next architecture, which is a which is called new age architecture of the storage. Okay, so basically in that, if you can see that uh, the same thing is PC server, and here is the storage device, or maybe you can say the disk base or uh, your hard disk. Okay, so what exactly in the new architecture? Uh, they have made it like you know they have uh, grouped those disks into a network so basically they formed a network of a storage so in that what is the advantage of uh, using the new architecture over old architecture the first very first thing is sharing of the resources so suppose if the hard drive is filled of this server then it can easily you know uh, borrow the hard drive of this and it can store easily the data on the hard disk. The, se the second thing is the accessibility. Any server can accessible any of the storage device. And the third thing is the uh, uh, the third thing is 
all the storage is visible to all the servers okay so this is the new architecture now uh, move to like as i said uh, uh, i mean here in the new architecture we are creating a storage i mean the network of the storage okay so on the network basis on on the large scale if i uh, talk about you know old uh, i mean uh, large enterprises mid size enterprises and small size enterprises so actually how they you know storing their data so this is the basically this is the uh, type of a network architecture which they have to follow only three type of available right now in the market first is dash it's a direct attached storage okay so uh, the very very basic example is like you have connected your laptop with usb cable and the device or maybe you are connecting your laptop with the pen drive this is the very simple example of dash system so it means that storage device is your pen drive which is the external storage device and you have connected with your laptop and you are backing your data into your pen drive and after that you remove it and you keep it with you so your laptop will be free so this is the one of way to you know store that uh, your data the second thing is nas nas stand for network attach server or network attached storage so network stack attached storage is what so i have explained this with this diagram so here you can see you you have a pc you have a server you have a nas a storage appliance nas storage appliance means it has their own uh, understanding of storing the data and it has the capacity it has a space which store the data so basically in that your storage device is directly attached to your local network lan is your local area network so directly your nas device is connected to your lan so in that you can directly access from your pc to your storage device so uh, and the third thing is san san is the storage attached network it means your storage is visible to you or maybe you can group your storage and server you know one network so i have referred this dotted line to this diagram so this is the uh, fundamental of uh, you know san storage attached network if you see this diagram i have a storage device i have a server what i have did i have uh, grouped this storage device into a network so the network means that group of or collection of your peripherals so here the peripherals is your storage device so this is the architecture of san so if i talk about the uh, you know all these are the these three is the famous uh, architecture or the network architecture which is using by all the you know mid size or uh, large scale uh, companies so if i give the example of dash as i have given the pen drive example the second thing is nas so in nas example what you can say uh, the very famous is your sharepoint where you can uh, you know save your files and anyone can see or maybe on the sharing basis you can see or the next example is i can give the ftp or sftp where you put your file okay and at a time one single person can see that file or edit that file if someone is already open that file then it will show okay this is the read only file to you so these are the very basic example or maybe in your uh, company uh, area if you have a file in your pc then how if you want to share that file then you can right click and share that file so that is again an example which runs over the nas because ultimately the data is stored in some other device and where you are visible uh, you are available those data over the network to some other person okay so this is the example of san now if uh, nas if i talk about san so i have again mentioned uh, like on what basis they have handled it so the nas is handling everything on the file level whereas san is ev handling everything on the block level because ultimately the data store in your hard disk hard disk means your pc hard disk or maybe your uh, laptop hard disk or maybe any other device so ultimately when data store it store in the form of a block so san is handling in the block level whereas if i talk about the architecture which san available uh, available in the market then there is a two type of architecture in san there one is ip san and one is fiber channel san fc is fiber channel okay so ip san means what you are using your san architecture the same architecture over ip ip means your local area network you have set it up okay so in that case what happened scsi protocol will transfer over the 
IP. Okay. And so the SCSI, what is SCSI in that case? SCSI is a small computer system interface which is like all the hard drive or all the hardware have some SCSI unique ID. Okay. Then SCSI is again a kind of, you know, you can say uh, it is a standard which uh, comprises your SCSI cable, SCSI protocol and uh, other set of rules. Okay. So every hardware have some value and it is called as a SCSI value. So in IPSAN, SCSI protocol transfer over the your IP network. Whereas in fiber channel SAN, what happened? Your SCSI protocol transfer over your fiber channel network. And these two require a different kind of switch. So suppose if I talk about the IP SAN, then maybe it, it will be, you know, that SCSI will transfer over your Ethernet switch, which is already inbuilt. Whereas if I talk about FC SAN, in that case, you have, you need a special kind of a switch, which is called as a brocade switch, I mean fiber channel switch. The companies are uh, quite uh, famous like uh, Brocade or Cisco switch is required in that case. So uh, nowadays the IP SAN is more popular compared to FC SAN because IP SAN will work in your existing environment because everybody have an Ethernet switch for sharing or IP and other stuff. So the IP SAN is quite uh, famous in the market right now. Now if I move to this side, so here I have mentioned something called RAID, R-A-I-D. So the RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disk. So what is the need of RAID is, like here we talk about in this uh, case is like we are storing our data in your hard disk, okay. So for available, made available to the users and the, as I said like the data is always available or to the user and the performance is you know increased compared to your tape based solutions. So how it will go? So this is the concept which is called RAID, RAID concept. So in RAID concept, uh, there is the two advantages which is uh, very basic for the RAID is the reliability and the performance. So by using the RAID concept, all, uh, all this architecture will give these two advantages, reliability and performance. So if I talk about type of the RAID, so currently uh, 0, 1, 3, 5, 6, these are the type of a RAID available in the market. Okay. So RAID is uh, as I stand uh, redundant array of independent disks. So it is a kind of you know uh, you have J board. So it's a group of hard disk which is collectively uh, you know shown as a single array. Array I, I guess you can uh, imagine the array means like uh, you have a four disk and you grouped it together. So it will uh, and it will visible as a one single storage. Okay. So this uh, and uh, if I talk about again uh, on the type of the RAID is available, so it's 0, 1, 3, 5 and 6. So what happened in 0? I have mentioned in the diagram if you can see, 0 means, RAID 0 means the striping. So it inbuilt algorithm is striping. So if the data comes, so how it will distribute towards the your hard drive. So suppose data is coming, so on the first, very first disk it will be, it will store A, then the next data will store in the next hard drive, the next data will store in the next hard drive. So I have mentioned it, so this is called striping A, B, C, D, E, F, all the data is storing in the new hard drives, okay. And uh, the second thing is mirror, mirroring, RAID 1. So in RAID 1, as its name suggests mirroring, it means it mirrors the same data into another disk. So suppose it, I have a two disk here, so if you are storing your data A here, so it will automatically if you have implemented RAID 1, in that case it will copy the A to another disk, B to another disk, C to another disk. So in that case what happened, if these this hard disk crash, still the data is available to you. Whereas in that case, the RAID 0 case, if one disk will go offline, then the data will, then in suppose this, uh, this disk go offline, in that case you will not get this data. So this is the disadvantage of using RAID 0, okay, and why uh, people are using RAID 1. But there are several advantages of RAID 0 and RAID 1, again, the speed in that case or the performance of RAID 0 will be high compared to this, because it will take time to copy your one data to one disk and another disk in that case. But the reliability 
or if you say the uh, recovery time for rate uh, 1 will be high compared to rate 0. Now move forward to rate 3, 5 and 6. So here yeah, I have mentioned rate 3. For rate 3 it's a byte wise striping fixed parity. So I'll explain what parity is. Parity is something uh, by which you can recover your data. So suppose I have A, B and I have one parity for that. So suppose if B goes offline, so I can, uh, the parity will have the information of B. Then I can subtract A from the parity and I'll get the information for B. So this is the parity concept. So basically in uh, rate 3, byte was striping and fixed parity. So I have mentioned here three boxes. So it's the three disk. So stripe wise, I guess I have explained in the rate 0. So my data will go like A, B, C, D. And there is a one dedicated disk made, uh, available here which store its parity. So for AB the parity is PAB okay? and for CD the parity is CD. So suppose if B, this disk goes offline then you can easily get the data for B, uh, this disk from parity disk. But there is a disad what disadvantage it has if the parity disk goes down. okay? If parity with this goes down and or suppose maybe two this goes down like this and this in that case you will not get the data B and D. Now so uh, to overcome this issue uh, in rate 3 or rate 0 or rate 1 <coughs> something uh, comes into a picture is called rate 5 and rate 6. So rate 5 what rate 5 is it's I have mentioned this distributed parity means the parity disk is distributed okay so in the rate 3 the parity is fixed in that so suppose if that goes down then it will be difficulty for us so in the rate 5 the parity is distributed so the, I have mentioned the parity AB and parity CD it comes here so in that case if this disk goes down then you can easily recover the data and if this disk goes down so again it will uh, only contain the single point of failure. So, so one disk, if one disk goes down, then only you can recover it. If two disk goes down, in that case you cannot recover it. So again, to overcome this issue, rate 6 come to a picture. In this, it has a distri uh, dual distributed parity. So dual distributed parity means what? You have a two parity disk and it will be distributed across the system. So in that case, if your two disk goes down, then, on, then also you will get the data. How? So A, B and its parity store is P, A, B and P, A, B. Here C and D and its parity is stored in 2 and 3. So suppose if the, these two days goes down, then I have a A, B data and I have a C data. I will easily get this D data here. And if these two days goes down, then also I can get the data in that case. So these are the rate concept which, uh, so the advantage of rate is like your data is reliable, and uh, it will be highly available to the customer and in that case uh, what happened like you know you uh, you have a bunch of a hard disk and you merge it together and it will and it is a com completely logical uh, thing it is not a physical so it your uh, storage will see all the disk as a one logical unit okay next move to what storage solution or what companies deals with the storage solution currently in the market so I have mentioned some of the companies, maybe we, I mean, uh, some more companies also handling this storage solution and providing the storage solution to the customer. But I have mentioned the top one. So the first thing is, uh, the company is EMC Dell. The second company is Hitachi. And the third company is Hybrid Packard Enterprise or HPE. So I have mentioned two products of HPE. One is King's Cross and second is the Westminster. So, why I have mentioned these two products because it's uh, currently in market it's on number one. Why? Because it ha both the product have some unique feature which EMC and Hitachi doesn't have. So probably uh, some of the features are common on across the all the storage like deduplication. So the deduplication means to storing unique data and for the duplicate data it will refer uh, it will refer the hash so probably deduplication algorithm is implemented in across all the storage i mean it is used by, by all the companies but 
in HP, in the K-Cross and the Westminster, they are using the traditional method which is uh, storing the data like on virtual tape and your NAS environment over share. Whereas HP introduced one more concept of storing the data which is called Catalyst Interface. In Catalyst Interface, what happened? Uh, it will provide a data, you know, uh, like low bandwidth deduplication and high bandwidth deduplication. So as I mentioned, the deduplication is like storing a unique data and for duplicate, it will uh, create a pointer towards the storage that my data is available for duplication. So in HPE, uh, that low level deduplication means if customer want my network bandwidth is low and I want the only unique data. In that case, what it will do? The deduplication happen on the target uh, on the source side and only unique data will send. So in that case, your target should not you know uh, go into a stress and uh, and perform a deduplication. So it will reduce the time and it will perform a fast backup in that case. Whereas high bandwidth. High bandwidth means it's normal like one your target is sending, your source is sending data to one storage box and it's come all the data coming over the network and it utilizing all the network bandwidth and coming to the target and then after that target is you know uh, deduplicate all the data and then storing it. So uh, there is some more products which HPE has some generation 1, generation 2, generation 3. It depends on the client requirement or the customer requirement. They also have a virtual uh, VSA which is called uh, virtual storage appliance. So suppose if someone is not able to you know afford the hard, uh, hardware, then in that case in the existing hardware they can virtually you know import and make the structure for these, these machines. And other, uh, so almost I have a, I have covered some of the storage uh, solutions which is currently available in the market. And for other things, I guess uh, if you wanted to read about these, what these products are, then you can Google out. You will easily find out them. Thank you so much.